there is a star in the constellation Libra. Its catalogue name is HD 140283. Um, astronomers call it the Methuselah star. When I first encountered its file in the archive, I assumed there had been an error in the data. The measurements suggested this star was 14.5 billion years old, perhaps older. But the universe itself, according to our most refined calculations, is only 13.8 billion years. A star cannot be older than existence itself, and yet there it burns. I began pulling files, not just on HD 140283, but on dozens of others, stellar fossils scattered across the cosmos, each one whispering the same impossible truth. Some of them remember a time before time had a name. This is not a story about one anomaly. This is a story about what happens when the clock of the universe begins to run backward. The hunt for ancient stars began not with cosmology, but with chemistry. In 1920, Cecilia Payne Gaposchkin stood at the Harvard College Observatory and realized something extraordinary. Stars were not all made of the same material. Some were rich in heavy elements, iron, carbon, oxygen. Others were almost pure hydrogen and helium, as if they had been born in a simpler, emptier time. I kept returning to her notebooks. She had glimpsed something fundamental. Stars are not just burning. They are remembering. Their light carries the fingerprint of the universe's infancy. By the 1950s, astronomers realized that the oldest stars, those with almost no metals, must have formed shortly after the Big Bang, when the universe contained only the lightest elements. These stars became known as Population 2 stars, and among them, a rare few Population 3 candidates, hypothetical stars from the very first generation, composed entirely of primordial gas. None have ever been directly observed. They exist only in our simulations and spectral models. But dating a star is not like counting tree rings. It requires models' nuclear fusion rates, luminosity curves, the slow dimming of hydrogen into helium. Each calculation depends on assumptions about the universe's age, its expansion rate, and the moment when the first atoms cooled into existence. And those assumptions, I would learn, were beginning to crack. By the 1990s, new instruments, Hipparchos, then Hubble, allowed astronomers to measure stellar distances with unprecedented precision. And when they recalculated the ages of the oldest stars, something went wrong. The stars were too old, not by a little, by hundreds of millions of years, in some cases by over a billion. One star kept appearing in the data, HD 140283, a subgiant star 190 light years away, dim, unremarkable, and impossibly ancient. In 2000, um, a team led by Howard Bond at the Space Telescope Science Institute turned Hubble toward HD 140283. They wanted a definitive age. The process is painstaking. To age a star, you must know its distance, its brightness, its chemical composition, and its mass. Each measurement feeds into stellar evolution models, um, equations that predict how a star burns, dims, and dies over billions of years. Bond's team worked for years. They refined the parallax measurements, accounting for Hubble's orbital drift. They analyzed the star's spectrum, searching for traces of heavy elements. They compared its light curve to theoretical models of subgiant evolution. In 2013, they published their result 14.46 billion years, plus or minus 0 0.8 billion, 14.46 billion years, older than the universe by more than half a billion years, comfortably within the margin of error, but still unsettling, still impossible. The scientific community did not panic. Margins of error exist for a reason. But I noticed something else in the archive, a pattern. HD 140283 was not alone. BD plus 17 degrees, 3248, 13.8 billion years. He 1523 13.2 billion years. CS31082 12.5 billion years. Dozens more clustered at the edge of cosmic time. These were not outliers. They were a population. A generation of stars born so early that their existence strained the timeline. If even a few of them were truly older than 13.8 billion years, then something in our cosmic clock was wrong. But what? Three possibilities emerged, each one unsettling in its own way. The first explanation was the simplest. Perhaps we were aging stars incorrectly. Stellar evolution models rely on equations of nuclear fusion, convection, and radiation pressure. These models predict how a star's luminosity and temperature change as it exhausts hydrogen and begins fusing helium. For subgiants like HD140283, 
this process is well understood, or so we thought. I, I spent days in the older papers tracing the history of stellar modeling. The equations are elegant, but they rest on assumptions. Opacity, how easily light escapes the star's interior. Convection, how heat churns through its outer layers. Mixing, how elements redistribute during fusion. Small errors in these parameters compound over billions of years. In 2015, a team at the University of Cambridge proposed a revision. They argued that metal-poor stars like HD 140283 might undergo deeper convective mixing than previously assumed. This would extend their lifetimes, making them appear older than they truly were. The revised age was 13.7 billion years, just barely within the universe's timeline. It was a tempting solution, adjust the models, and the paradox vanishes. But the revision depended on uncertain physics. Convection in low metallicity stars is poorly understood, difficult to simulate, and nearly impossible to observe directly. Um, and then there was the other problem. Globular clusters are some of the oldest structures in the universe. They contain thousands of stars, all born from the same primordial cloud. By studying their collective properties, astronomers can age them with greater confidence than any single star. In 2004, Harvey Richer used Hubble to study white dwarfs in the cluster M4. White dwarfs are the remnants of dead stars. They cool at a predictable rate, like cosmic embers. By measuring their temperatures, Richer calculated the cluster's age as 12.7 billion years, with a margin of error of 0.7 billion, 12.7 billion years. Old, yes, but still younger than the universe. Comfortable, safe, but other clusters told different stories. Uh, NGC 6397, studied by the European Southern Observatory, yielded ages between 13.4 and 13.9 billion years. Some calculations pushed even higher. If the models were wrong, they were wrong everywhere. And if they were right, then the universe had a memory problem. The second possibility was more radical. Perhaps the universe itself is older than we think. The age of the universe is not directly measured. It is calculated, derived from the Hubble constant, the rate at which space expands. Measure the expansion rate today, extrapolate backward, and you arrive at the moment of the Big Bang. For decades, astronomers debated the Hubble constant's value. In the 1990s, two methods emerged, one using nearby supernovae, the other using the cosmic microwave background, the faint afterglow of the Big Bang itself. In 2003, NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe measured the background with exquisite precision. Its result was a Hubble constant of 70.0 kilometers per second per megaparsec, give or take a few percent. The universe's age was 13.77 billion years. For a time, this felt like an answer. The margin of error on the universe's age had shrunk. In 2013, Bond's team revised HD 140283's age. They brought it down to 14.27 billion years. This was still high, but it overlapped with the universe's error bars. The paradox seemed to have been tamed, but then the measurements began to diverge. In 2013, the European Space Agency launched Planck, a more sensitive probe. Planck's measurement of the Hubble constant came in lower at 67.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A slower expansion meant an older universe, but only slightly. According to Planck, the universe was 13.8 billion years old. Meanwhile, astronomers using supernovae, exploding stars whose brightness is predictable, kept finding a faster expansion rate at 73, sometimes 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A faster expansion meant a, a younger universe. I kept circling this tension. Two methods, both precise and reputable, disagreed by nearly 10%. In cosmology, that is not a rounding error. That is a crisis. The discrepancy became known as the Hubble tension. It meant something unsettling. Either one method was systematically wrong, or the universe did not expand at a constant rate. Perhaps dark energy, the mysterious force accelerating the cosmos, behaved differently in the past. Perhaps the early universe expanded faster or slower than our models predict. If the universe is older than 13.8 billion years, say 14.5 or 15 billion, then stars like HD 140283 fit comfortably into the timeline they are no longer paradoxes, just elders. But that solution requires rewriting cosmology. It requires admitting that our most fundamental clock, the expansion of space itself, might be miscalibrated. Um, and it still does not explain everything. The third possibility was the strangest. 
Perhaps the stars are not as old as they appear. Stars age by burning hydrogen into helium. The less metal they contain, the slower they burn. But there is another factor, one that is almost impossible to measure, mass transfer. I had overlooked this at first. Most of the ancient stars are solitary, or so we assume. But if a star once had a, a companion, if it accreted mass from a binary partner, it could appear younger and brighter than it truly is, or older and dimmer, depending on the timing. In 2016, a team at the University of Tokyo proposed that some ancient stars might be merger remnants, two smaller stars that collided and fused early in the universe's history. Such a star would carry the chemical signature of the primordial era, but its internal structure would be scrambled, confounding age estimates. It was a provocative idea, but it was also unfalsifiable. We cannot observe what happened 13 billion years ago. We can only infer. Then there was the other possibility, one that appeared in a 2018 paper from the Max Planck Institute. What if some of the oldest stars formed not in the immediate aftermath of the Big Bang, but later in pockets of gas that somehow remained unpolluted by supernovae? The first generation of stars, population three, were massive, short-lived and explosive. When they died, they seeded the universe with heavy elements. But perhaps in isolated regions, pristine gas lingered from that gas, a second wave of metal poor stars could have formed stars that looked ancient but were actually younger than the universe's first structures. It was an elegant hypothesis. It explained the ages without breaking cosmology. But it required a universe more heterogeneous, more patchy than our models predict. It required pockets of time, frozen in chemical stasis. Still, the measurements did not fully align. The margins of error overlapped, but barely. The clock ticked backward, whispering that something, somewhere, was wrong. By 2020, the Methuselah problem had evolved into something larger, a constellation of tensions. The Hubble tension persisted. The oldest stars remained at the edge of plausibility. New data from the James Webb Space Telescope, launched in 2021, began revealing galaxies from the universe's first 500 million years. Galaxies that appeared more massive, more structured than early models predicted. I wondered if we had been asking the wrong question. Not, are the stars too old, but is our timeline too simple? The standard model of cosmology, Lambda CDM, assumes a smooth, homogeneous universe. It assumes dark energy is constant. It assumes the Big Bang was singular, instantaneous, and uniform. But what if the early universe was messier than we think? What if the first billion years unfolded in fits and starts with regions of space-time aging at different rates. In 2022, a paper from the Perimeter Institute proposed a radical idea. What if the universe underwent a brief period of rapid contraction before the Big Bang, a big bounce? In such a scenario, time before the bounce could leave faint imprints, structures, stars, relics that appear older than the current expansion phase. It was speculative, untestable for now. But it hinted at something I had felt throughout this investigation, that time itself at cosmic scales might not be as linear as we assume. Um, and so the archive grew not with answers, but with better questions. Uh, I returned to the Methuselah star one last time. In 2023, a new study used Gaia's parallax data to refine its distance. The revised age. 14 billion years, plus or minus 0 0.4 billion, close enough to be possible, far enough to remain unsettling. The star has not changed. It burns as it always has, hydrogen fusing into helium, light streaming outward for 190 years before reaching Earth. What has changed is our ability to listen, to decode the story written in its uh, spectrum. And the story it tells is this, the universe is older than we can measure, stranger than we can model, and more patient than we can imagine. These stars, HD 140283, BD plus 17 degrees 3248, HE 1000, 523 to 0901, and dozens more are not anomalies, they are witnesses. They remember the moment when the first atoms cooled into matter. They remember the silence before galaxies. They remember the universe when it was simple, before complexity, before life, before questions. We will never know with certainty if they are older than the Big Bang. We will never untangle all the variables, the convection depths, the mass transfers, the dark energy fluctuations, but we will keep measuring. We will keep refining because that is what science does. It does not demand certainty. It demands curiosity. And so long as these stars still shine, 
the clock of the universe remains open to revision. I closed the file on HD 140283, but I did not shelve it. Because the mystery is not solved, it is only better understood. Perhaps the stars are younger than they seem. Perhaps the universe is older. Perhaps time itself, at the scale of billions of years, bends in ways we have not yet mapped. Or, perhaps, just perhaps, the universe is telling us that it does not fit neatly into our equations, that it was never meant to. And so the archive grows. Another theory shelved, another mystery opened, 